Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. This is Allison Dwyer with CQG, and it's my pleasure to introduce the Cubidia team who will be providing an overview of their platform, QCade, and their integration with CQG. Today's speakers include Jim Smith, Head of U.S. Sales for Cubidia, Marco Suarez, Co-Founder and Partner of Cubidia, and Kevin Falkman, Product Specialist at CQG. If you have any questions during the webinar, please enter them into the Q&A section window and we will be answering them at the end. Without further ado, I'll turn it over to our first presenter, Marcos. Thank you, Alison, um, and thank you a lot of you for this opportunity to show us the, our QK trading platform. Uh, the agenda for today will be making a review of uh, QK, what it is, uh, and different uh, steps of the workflow, like building automatic strategies with QK, how to launch and optimize strategies uh, in QK, and how to execute the strategies in real time in the simulated and live environments. We will also review uh, the integration with the CQG tools and all the advantages of this integration, and how you can get started with QK uh, for free. So let's start with what is QK. Uh, QK is a comprehensive solution to automate your trading but focusing on the market and not on the technology. In QK, you can create strategies in a drag and drop interface, so you don't need to be a software developer to create automatic strategies. You can also uh, launch these strategies to backtest to our service of backtesting uh, and launch the strategies to execution in the live and simulated market, so you don't need to get any infrastructure because we provide everything as a service. QK works as a cloud application uh, in QK. Uh, you can create the, uh, the strategies in the lightweight uh, desk application. This light application allows you to create these strategies in this drag and drop, so you don't need to write a single line of code. And you can launch and review the result of the back test, and launch and review, uh, have control of uh, the strategies executing in real time. But all the uh, processes are performed in our servers, so we host the database. You don't need to get a database or servers to execute in this database. And we also have servers for execution the strategy in real time. And these are connected uh, on collocation with the CQG servers, so we receive uh, data directly from them. And with, uh, through the CQG infrastructure, we can connect with uh, all the markets that you can connect through your CQG tools. But I think the best way to understand the, the tool is following the workflow of the use of the tool with the real tool. So let's go. This is the initial window where you can start uh, creating new strategies here. I uh, have uh, on the left some projects and some strategies that I will show you as an example. Uh, here at the top, uh, you can create new projects and new strategies. We can create one so you can see the process. When we create a new strategy, uh, we have a white canvas with a palette on the right uh, with all the elements that I can use uh, to create uh, my strategies. There is different type of elements, groups depending on their functionality. You can have access to all of them. And to use them, you just need to click, drag, and drop them into the canvas. Um, you can drag, for instance, uh, uh, the instruments. You can drag as many instruments as you want. You can, you can allow you to create strategies multi-instrument, or two, three, whatever number of instruments you need. So you can create your own uh, spreads or whatever uh, kind of a strategy you want. You also can uh, can introduce different types of time frames, uh, tick data, BSV and ask, a last traded price, and the typical aggregations, candles, or bar, as you prefer. Uh, in the ticks, you will have the BIS and ask prices and the BIS and ask volumes. Uh, for the last traded price, you have the price and the volume. And in the candles, you have the open, high, low, close, and volume. In elements like the candle that have some parameters, like time unit and period, you can double click and introduce a new value or in this case, uh, you can expand the menu. We can do our candles up to one second later. Uh, to relate the elements between them, you just need to click on the output of one element and connect with the input of the element that you want to relate. Uh, this way, it's very easy to decide the workflow with the tool. You can also uh, introduce uh, as many um, indicators or any kind of function, mathematical function, to analyze the prices and relate them uh, with the inputs. If you want, you can even create your own indicators, and to do that, uh, you can come up here. And the same way that we can create uh, new strategies, we can create new components. Uh, 
When I create a new component, it's very similar to a new strategy, but here I can decide how many inputs this component will have and, or, and how many outputs. I can even, again, double click to change the name of this element. And in the middle, I can introduce any logic. Let me show you a finished component that I have here for you, in this example. Here I, I introduce uh, three inputs with a uh, name term, high, low, and close. And these are connected to other components because you can create uh, introduce component inside other components. I can double click here on the plus sign to see the interior. Here I am adding the three inputs and dividing the result by three. And I take this result and use it as an input of my RSI. Uh, the indicators can receive any numerical series. They don't need to uh, be just direct braces. And in fact, you can combine uh, indicators here by introducing a movie and I average over the result. So when I create my own components here on the left, how to use these components into strategies? Here, for instance, I can take uh, the first example of strategy. That is a very basic RSI strategy. And I can replace this with my own version. I can, for instance, create a copy of this strategy and open the copy just to have a different version. And to introduce the component, I drag and drag and drop them into the canvas. So it's just like the elements on the palette. I can suppress this and connect this element. If we wait over the input, I can see the names of the input, so I can remember easily uh, which kind of connections I, can, I want to do for this component. Uh, at some point, uh, you want to introduce rules. Uh, decide comparing the, the result of different series. For instance, uh, if something is bigger or is smaller, or even the moment in which it became bigger or became smaller. In this case, crossing down, it became smaller when the RSI became smaller than a third threshold. Here is the static value, 25. So this could be a, a rule to go into the market, and I can introduce uh, different types of rules. For instance, in the position section, I have the position information element. This element, I have it here. This element gives me information if I have a long or short position, just true or false, and if the size of my position, the long position or the short position. T is for the hour in which I get my position, and I'll show you later an example of how to use this kind of information. Uh, in this first example, the rule is very simple. It's simply if I don't have long position and my RSI is becoming smaller than 25, I want to go into the market with a market order. You can use uh, different type of orders. Uh, by the way, here you can see that, you know, if I don't have long position and my RSI is crossing below 25, just the words that I am using is just the elements that I need to take to create the rule. And same with the orders. I want to go into the market order or a limit order or even stop orders. All of them have a signal input. You need to connect here uh, the conditions uh, that you want to meet to uh, go into the market, to uh, launch an order to the market. And you can introduce here also the quantity. In this case, I set a fixed quantity for simplicity, but you can create your own logic, maybe depending on volatility or whatever criteria, criteria that you want to uh, decide the quantity of your orders. In the limit order, there is another input, the price input. So you can, of course, create uh, your own logic to decide the uh, price of your orders. All of them have um, an easy way to configure an output with a stop. I just can, again, double click and select the option, for instance, by price or the take profit. So I can, for instance, I easily select a create a bracket order. In this way, uh, this is a way to, you know, uh, get a, a simple way of exiting the position. But if you want to create other conditions, you can use the close position element. I have one here. And I can create a rule, for instance, if my RSI is bigger uh, than a certain threshold. Uh, this is uh, an automatic strategy, and even it's just a simple diagram, we don't need to write a single line of code. Uh, this could be processed, and you can easily add different kind of rules. And I can show you a couple of examples about this. First example here, I'm using the hours of the day, so I can check if my uh, current time, the, day, the time of my last data is between a certain time frame, uh, in this case, to enable the execution of the order, but you can use this, for instance, to change the parameters depending on the hour of the day or just to restrict uh, your uh, strategy. It's up to you. 
You can also introduce conditions on duration. As I told you before, the position information gives you information of the hour in which you open your position. You can compare uh, this hour with the hour of your last data and measure the difference in time. There is some time arithmetic elements to manage this. Uh, with this difference in time, you can compare and see if it's bigger. Uh, left input is A and right input is B. Uh, if it's bigger than a certain quantity, here I have 30 minutes, but I can, again, with a double click, set the quantity that I want. And with this condition, could be a rule to go out of the market or to make any other uh, kind of uh, operation. This is, uh, there is more examples of how to combine two instruments or how to use uh, more advanced elements like counters, selectors, but I want to show you a different type of strategy. Uh, more on the idea of uh, not just going in and out of the market, but executing, making a more smart execution. This is an example, it's, it's very simple. And of course, all of these examples are just to show you how the tool works. We don't pretend to give you any advice on how to invest on the market. You know, it's just very simple examples. But uh, I think it could be useful to show you, you know, how to combine the elements uh, in the in QK8. Here, I am executing an order with a limit at the price of the market. And I want, if I want to introduce a big volume, bigger than the available volume, uh, what I do is pick a fraction of this uh, volume with this element. Here I am selecting the smallest of them, multiply by a random number and round to an integral number, just to pick fractions of the available volume on the market. There is other conditions, like the price must be smaller than a certain limit, or the size of the gap must be smaller than a certain limit. But the most interesting is the condition with the last field information. This has another T output, the hour in which I get my last field, similar to the position element, we have T output, time output. Again, I measure the difference with my last data, and if this difference is bigger than a certain quantity, then I enable launching the order to the market. This way, I can create uh, strategies to, for instance, slice an execution in the time and slice uh, the quantities uh, on different ways. So this is uh, different ways of creating strategies. All of these strategies are automatic strategies, so they can be um, backtested, uh, executed in real time automatically, and they can be processed with historical data to perform a backtest. But before showing you uh, the backtest, I want to show you another capability, uh, and it's the possibility of using variables. The variables that we can create here on the left we can create a decimal or integral variables, even Boolean, true or false variables. This allows us to optimize the strategy. Here I have created a couple of them, and to use them, there is two different ways. The first one is just, again, dragging and dropping them to the canvas, just like uh, the components of the element or the elements in the palette. I have one example here, and connecting this variable uh, to one input, very similar to with, uh, as a fixed value, but having a variable, I will test which uh, value of this variable provides me best results. If I want to use the variable as a parameter, like here, I can double click, and instead of typing a, a value, like he, here, I can expand the menu and select the variable. So this way, the variable is linked with the parameter. I can select this, and the strategy is completed, and we can launch the back test. You don't need any infrastructure, you just need to come up here, Upload the strategy to backtest. Click here, and you get a simple form to launch the strategy. Just set a name, like my other side, for instance. Set the period of time, uh, the historical period in which you want to increase and in test the, the, the execution. For instance, uh, the first quarter of 2017. This way. Uh, you can introduce some commissions, but the interesting point is here selecting the instrument. When we create this strategy, we don't specify which instrument we want to use. So now you can easily test this model of the strategy on different instruments. Just came here to the Choose button. And here you have all the available instruments. You can uh, select by exchange, by security type, or searching uh, by name or by symbol. Here, the symbols are security symbols, so it will be easy for you to locate the symbols uh, that you are used to do, used uh, in the CQG tools. I can choose. Here is my instrument selected. The variables appears next to this. 
uh, the variable that we create here on the left that we can use um, as parameter or as inputs. Now we can introduce a value and test different values to this. We can introduce a fixed value or test them through a range of values from 50 to 60 on a step of 10, for instance. And the same uh, for the error side, you can test multiple variables simultaneously and the system will combine uh, all of the uh, all of the elements. Uh, system, if there is anything wrong, the system will indicate you what it is. I can type a new name for the strategy. Now finish its enable, launch it. There will be six different combinations of parameters. So okay, go ahead. And the strategy uh, goes to our system where we host the database and the computers to perform the back test. So you don't need to maintain that. You just need to come up here, and here I have the open report window. We have this window to receive the result of this back test. I have the back test that I launched here. It's a group, in fact, that contains uh, the, all the different back tests with all the combinations uh, of results. They are being executed, and they send me the results. I can show you this that I made before. I can double click on the group. I see a comparison of some statistic for the different values of the parameters. I can, for instance, sort uh, by the net profit. The biggest is the number five. So I can pick it here or here. It's just the same with a double click. I can see the details of the back testing. Uh, initially, uh, the information is about the parameters used the, for this back testing, uh, and the hours and the days. Next level is uh, some statistics on the back test, not just net profit, but also uh, other ratios and figures of the back test to analyze the quality of the strategy. If you want to go in more detail, you can see all the trades executed by the strategy. Here we have every uh, every time that you go in and out of the market, uh, the hours, uh, the prices, and the profit, even the duration. If you need to, uh, to understand in more detail, you can see all the orders that will be executed uh, if the strategy run in this uh, period of time, where you can see when the order was uh, sent to the market, if it was filled or cancelled, if it has replacements, every single event we can be traced uh, from here. You can have some charts, for instance, an equity curve. Uh, this is not bad for this period of time. Uh, and this way you can easily uh, change um, conditions, change parameters, and search for a strategy that uh, works for you. All of this, of course, uh, without uh, writing a single line of code. And again, the next step is executing this strategy in real time. This is an automatic strategy. Here we have the option to upload the rest back test, and by the side is the option to uh, upload the strategy to simulation. To live market, it's exactly the same. Even the simulation is very similar to back test. We just type a new name, a simulation for instance, and you can select a portfolio or just type a new name to create a new one. Again, we need to select the instruments. Remember, they are um, security instruments, so it's very easy uh, to locate them. Like this. And now I select the variables. Uh, for the variables, I need to introduce the values that I think uh, that produce me the best results. Uh, this, for example. And now finish is enabled, and I can upload this strategy to the execution system. So the strategy is ready to be executed. We have a different window, so if you have multiple screens, you could have them open simultaneously. Here, here is the report window for back testing, and by this side is the simulation window and the live execution. We open the simulation window in this occasion. And I can see here my new portfolio with my new strategy. Now it's a stop it, but uh, you can see here the details of the strategy, and we can start the strategy in the start button. As a confirmation, okay, and the strategy starts. Uh, this warm map status it's important uh, because uh, the strategy uh, will be waiting for the first real time data from the market, but at the same time they are recovering from the historical data all the necessary data to have fitted uh, the the indicators that need historical values. Let me uh, tell you an example. If you need a 10-hour moving average, the system automatically recovers 9 hours from the database, and when they receive the 
uh, data from the real time, they have enough data to produce a good result and start deciding if you need to launch orders to the market. So you can easily, uh, quickly start your strategies. I have another strategy uh, running here. <clears throat> By the way, all the strategies when you launch it to execution could be running uh, for months uh, the, and whenever time you want to uh, maintain the strategies running. When you want to stop the strategies, you can come here and decide to stop the strategy. When you stop the strategy, you can decide if you want to cancel your pending orders, the orders that will be working on the market, and if you want to automatically close your position in case some event uh, it's important to you and decide to stop your strategies and flood your position, you can do it automatically or not because you want to manage it manually. That is a strategy, finishing the running process. And show you another strategy that I have running here to show you how the system uh, showed you all the orders. The historical orders are on the right, or the order that was finished, order that was uh, filled, like this example, or cancel it, or even rejected in some cases. Um, for each of the orders, you can see all the events when the order was sent to the market, when the market set the order, if there is any uh, price changes, partial fields, every single event will be reported to you. Uh, and the same applies for the orders that are working now on the market. Here is a limit order working on the market, a certain price, and uh, we can see all the history of this order. At this point is where the integration with CQG uh, becomes important. Let me back here. In the diagram, the strategies are running in our server. It not depends on your internet connection. It's just direct connected with the CQG systems where we are receiving real-time data from CQG and sending to them uh, the orders that they connect with all the markets in the world. At the same time, CQG is feedbacking these orders to all of the CQG tools. So whatever application of CQG you are using, you can receive the order that was executed by QK. So we can search and see an example. Here I have a direct link to CQG M. It could work with any of the CQG tools. I'm just showing uh, this tool because uh, it's the one that came with the demo. You can open here the CQG M. And here I have an order. I can check that this order is the same order that I have here. I can see the ID of the order. This order is seven, ending on 7334. And I can see this the same order here. And the biggest advantage of this is, of course, you can, uh, even the automatic strategy is working, you can start uh, still be uh, managing your um, strategies as usual. You can see the orders here, but the most important is you can modify the orders and send it, for instance, to market price. I don't know, maybe. In this case, the order was filled because I sent it to market price. Then I can see in QK this same event, the replacement and the field. This is reported in your local time zone. In this case, it's mine. And you can see that two new orders pop up. Uh, this, the system is able to receive the changes even to make even you make manual changes on, on the CQG tool of your orders. The system can receive that changes and react according to the rules of your strategy. In this case, the system introduces a stop and a take profit. And you can see the same, them here. So. This is one of the biggest advantages of this level of integration with CQG, the possibility of uh, maintaining your uh, manual control of the orders. But going through CQG has uh, many other advantages that uh, Kevin Falman, a uh, product specialist at CQG, can explain you better than me. Kevin, please. Marco, thank you. Excellent explanation of the QK software. Thank you very much. CQG is very excited to be partnering with the Qubidia team. The QK software is a very powerful addition to the functionality currently provided by the various CQG products. CQG and QK will seamlessly integrate together, and this includes the various CQG offerings, such as our flagship integrated client, the CQG Trader, and CQG M. In fact, QK comes packaged with a trial of CQGM automatically, and that's what Marcos was showing you on one of the previous screens where he was interacting with one of the orders that was generated by QK and manipulating it from the CQGM front end. CQG provides and maintains all of the exchange connectivity and infrastructure for the trader. This really allows the trader to focus on trading, developing strategies, and spending time doing on things that are most important instead of 
worrying about routers, switches, exchange connectivity, and such. This also provides a trader or an FCM a turnkey solution. Traders can utilize CQG's various FCM partners, providing maximum flexibility and choices for the trader. This also includes CQG's industry-leading risk management tools. Sophisticated and cost-effective risk management for FCMs and traders' safety and confidence in trading. Now I'd like to pass over to Jim Smith of Cubidia U.S. Sales to explain how to get started. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so we're hoping that this webinar has piqued your interest in our software and left you wondering how you can get your hands on it, how you can get a, a, a trial. To do this, you're going to want to go to the CQ, uh, to, excuse me, to the Cubidia website at www.cubidia.com and you will find a large blue button right in the center there that says free 15-day trial. If you click on this, it'll open up a small form for you to fill out to, to order your trial. You should shortly after that receive an email saying that your request for a new trial is pending, and slightly, uh, shortly after that you'll receive another one saying that it has been approved. Uh, this email also uh, contains a username and a password that you'll be using when you log in to QCade. Um, in that email, also you'll see a button that says download QCade and that will take you to this home page. You'll have a specific home page just for you. Uh, there's several important features on this page. First, you'll see download QCade. Uh, that's the blue button on the left that's highlighted right now and that allows you to download the, the software, the actual uh, installation package. Um, it's important to remember this one because at some point when there are updates and new versions of the software, you'll come back to this page and download from the same spot. Uh, just to the right of that is the download strategies. This will allow you to uh, install a package of pre-written um, strategies and sample code that, uh, that Marcos was walking you through a little earlier with some of the pieces he had. Um, those will install them so that you can uh, easily pull them up and use them as kind of a guide for how, uh, how you do specific things. The next button is the see videos. This takes you to um, an entire library of videos that have been prepared. Um, and you can see it's also on our website under QK training. This starts out right from what is uh, Cubidia and QK to how do I install it, to building uh, simple strategies, to building more complex strategies, and even uh, how to run back tests, how to run simulation tests. Uh, it's quite comprehensive. I believe there's 17 videos in all, but it should give you a pretty good idea of where to get started and how to do things. Um, the next thing you'll see on the home page is the uh, uh, user guide. There's a place there you can download the user guide. Um, you'll also see that from the editor, there's a uh, under help, you can hit the same thing and it'll bring you to the help if you ever have any questions while you're developing. Um, back on the home page, we also have a button that says download the license. This is important because once you have installed your software and you're going to log in, it's going to require you to load a license. So you want to download it here at the same time while you're downloading the software itself. Um, when you go to log in, it'll ask you to load license and, it'll, and you'll go and find where you downloaded this, this uh, file and it'll install it and then you're ready to go. Uh, the other important button is at the very top that says request live license. Once you have uh, you've built your strategy and you are uh, you've had a chance to do some testing and make sure everything is working the way you like, uh, you can request a live license and this is where you'll fill out the rest of the information uh, that, that we will need to get you set up. Um, we also mentioned earlier that there was an incentive to people who have uh, logged in and are attending our webinar right now. Um, that incentive is going to be uh, 15 days free live license. So as you see on the, uh, on the license file right here, at the very bottom there's a, there's a box that's 
set up for a department, do you want to type in this promotional code, webinar CQG 0517, all one word, into that, and then you will automatically receive the first 15 days for free. Um, but this is how you uh, order your free trial, download the software, and uh, order your live license. If you have any other questions before we go to the, the Q&A, um, please feel free to, to check out our website. Uh, there's lots of information on there in addition to those videos. Or feel free to contact us at either of the email addresses you see there. Um, they're both uh, constantly being manned, so we are, we're ready for any questions, uh, any comments, feedback, anything that you'd like to, uh, to get in touch with us about. So. If we, uh, if anybody, we're, we're going to start with some questions here very quickly. Um, if you are not hanging around for the questions, we want to thank you for attending. And uh, don't forget to uh, go to the website and order your 15-day trial and get your hands on it. Then start uh, seeing the power of QK and CQG together. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jim. As uh, he said, we are going to jump into our questions. Uh, one of the questions we have right now is, is it possible to expand QK with custom code in C, Python, or Java? If so, where will the code run, and is there any way to protect custom code? Marcos, I believe that would be something you'd want to discuss. Yes. Um, yes. Nowadays, uh, of creating uh, personal and dedicated uh, functions, it's made all, all through the components, as, as we showed you before. Uh, these components could be very flexible and have uh, all the necessary mathematical functions, and you can combine them as you wish. In our experience, you can really create uh, any kind of combination, well, close to any kind of combination. Um, and if you need something else, a new mathematical function, a new element that you want to use to create your own uh, proprietary um, indicator, you can request to us. We are continuously adding new things uh, to the palette. So uh, we are going to frequent updates uh, of the platform. And, and you know we are working on listening very carefully to all the users to decide which is the most useful element so they can create their own uh, elements. All of the code are run in our server. Uh, there is only a file accessible by, by the owner, and, and this is the way. But uh, to avoid complications, we don't allow now uh, to create with external code. I hope this uh, answers the question. If okay, thank you very much, Marcus. Thank you. Um, our second question is, can you send the automatic orders across multiple accounts? Um, you can send, when you execute a strategy, uh, you can decide uh, for each um, instrument, you can decide which um, account you want to use. Uh, you know, in CQG, uh, you can have configured multiple accounts uh, for a broker, and for each instrument, you can decide which account you want to use, uh, because, you know, you can even mix in the same strategy different type of instruments. So, yeah, this is possible to do. Thank you. And another question is, can the program create instrument filters? For example, if we want to trade instruments that have liquidity above 100 million U.S. dollars. Uh, in QK, you can, uh, I don't know if I understand exactly the question. Uh, in QK, you can uh, select for trading uh, any of the, of the instruments that you um, have available to use in the CQG tool. If you in the your CQG application, CQG integrated client, CQG M, uh, whatever in the middle, uh, have enabled to trade one instrument, you will be able to trade the same instrument with QK. I don't know if this answers the question. It's, yeah, thank you, Marcos. If I could interject, I think um, one of the ways that we can look at that is we'll actually look sometimes at liquidity in terms of how many contracts in the futures market are available at a price. Now that would have to be translated in terms of U.S. dollars or Euro um, in terms of the liquidity based on a currency conversion. 
But some of those things are possible because if we look at the current value, let's say, of the S&P 500 and we want to multiply that times X, we can ensure that there's enough liquidity to meet those needs. Yeah. Uh, we also now have another element that is the instrument information and that from a specific instrument um, gives you the tick size and the tick value, even the price, uh, the point value, depending on which kind of multiplication or operation you want to do. So um, you can make the strategy more independent of the instrument, which change from one to the other. Since you are multiplying with the tick size or the tick value of that specific instrument, you can translate and that into, uh, into um, you know, um, money instead of the points of the instrument. Okay, and another question. If possible, can we create complex filters that use fundamental and technical criteria? Barcos can probably show within the palette itself along the right-hand side, there are some technical indicators. Yeah, and the list of technical indicators there. Fundamental um, information can be extrapolated within the canvas, but we have a few things that you can see right here in terms of like uh, moving average, convergence, divergence, RSI, stochastic, and other technical filters like that. Yes. Um, QKIT is designed to process any kind of information. Now we don't have a specific uh, feed uh, of, uh, you know, um, uh, only the prices of the instrument, not the fundamental information of some things, uh, but we hope to add this very soon. Okay. Next question. Next question is, how is QK linked to the platform? I can start out with that. So QK is a standalone software that integrates with CQG. CQG essentially powers QK with market data, and QK processes the information based on the strategies that you develop within the Canvas and then from there utilizes CQG's infrastructure, firstly risk management tools, then connectivity to exchanges, and order information, whether it's working orders or filled orders or canceled orders, back to the user. Yeah, one detail about this, all the uh, communication with the user that, uh, for instance, if there is a risk uh, communication about, for instance, uh, um, maximum exposure limit that reject what your order. This is feedback uh, to, to your CQG application, but it's also feedback uh, to QK and we feedback this information to you so that at any point you can receive uh, what's happening with your orders and you can make your own decisions. Okay, and another question, any special setup required? Yeah, for setting up the, uh, the integration between the two products, if you've already uh, have your CQG set up, uh, it's just a matter of uh, enabling a couple of things. Uh, so we have a, a small list when it's time to do that uh, setup. There'll be a couple of things that are set up uh, at your clearing firm, and there'll be a couple of things that will be set up uh, on the QK side, but it's really only a matter of minutes to get everything uh, situated and the proper, proper credentials in place. So. Um, it's, it's quite easy. There's, there's no setup uh, as far as trying to get them to speak to each other or anything like that. It's already fully integrated to do that. Yeah. Uh, you, you only need the, the, Q, the QK uh, desk application that you installed during the demo. Uh, the servers are uh, part of the service that doesn't have any extra charge or any kind of deployment. They came uh, directly integrated, so you just need to uh, go to, into the live account in the desk application and everything is, is set up in the background. It looks like we have one more question. Can you use QK to manage auto-spreading strategies or is it only able to manipulate outright orders? I'd love to take that one. So currently QK is enabled to leverage the exchange outright products, including exchange-based spreads that are hosted at the exchange. CQG does have a co-located spreader, and we're currently in the works to include the spreader functionality, or essentially open up the spreader functionality to QK. So that is something that's in the works. I would love to keep in touch with folks who are interested in that, and I tend not to put an ETA on anything until I actually have it in my own hands. 
So it is in the works, and we hope to get that uh, sometime in the very near future. Thank you, Kevin. Okay. Uh, I just let the user know that uh, you can create, a, you know, a strategy with multiple instruments and create um, somehow a spread instrument strategies. But this is not, of course, the functionality, that, but very dedicated tool of the SQL Auto Spreader, and we'll hope to uh, add this functionality very soon. Okay, and can you execute a buy stop triggered on bid or vice versa? Yeah, you can uh, you can go into the market with the stop orders. Uh, you just need to select um, stop order, just like you have uh, limit orders. You decide the price of the stop, and uh, this is managed uh, with the stop orders that are uh, taken care by the. CQG, uh, CQG uh, are able to take care of uh, stop orders even in the market that doesn't allow uh, you to have a stop orders. Thank you, Kate. Uh, you can decide uh, which conditions you want uh, for launching this order, uh, the price of the order, and the quantity, just like uh, a limit order, but very similar to a limit order, but of course, in a twist off condition. There are a couple of other uh, ways to trigger trades too. So if you're looking for something, um, yeah. like you're saying, uh, it's just because it's bid and didn't actually trade there. Um, using the using uh, the regular limit or market orders, you can also um, build your own logic to say exactly when you want to fire an order or not. So um, if you don't, if you're not waiting for it to actually trade at that price, but but it, you just want to trigger it when it's bid, you can do that. Uh, as a separate possibility. Mm -hmm. Okay, and are high frequency strategies possible? Uh, you know, there is a different definition of high frequency. Uh, uh, we received the data from CQG. Uh, our servers that receive this data are uh, located in the same data center as CQG. Now we have servers mainly in Chicago. Uh, and and we'll uh, send the orders uh, back to security systems. This is very fast. We are talking about a few milliseconds of uh, round trip communication, depending a little bit on the strategy. Uh, but uh, so this is, could be very uh, fast, but you know, depending on your definition of high frequency, this can uh, be enough or not. I just prefer to, you know, give you a real figure than uh, saying it is high frequency or is not high frequency because that. The definition of high frequency depends a lot on the, on the listener. Okay, um, so it looks like, uh, hold on one moment. It looks like we're out of time. Um, we do have a few more questions. However, we are going to follow up on those with everyone. Uh, we would like to thank everyone for joining us today and thank our presenters. If you missed anything during today's webinar, you can always view a recording on CQG's YouTube page. Um, this will also be sent out via email blast. And if you have any follow-up questions, please feel free to get in contact with anyone from Cubidia or CQG. Thank you very much from, uh, from the QK side. And and thank you all for joining from the CQG side. This is Kevin, and I'm always happy to answer any questions. Product specialist here in Chicago. My email address is Kevin F, K E V I N F, at CQG.com. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Uh, just remember 